Welcome to another episode on the Extra Mile. My name is Alex and welcome to today's episode where we'll take a look at Assetto Corsa Evo in VR. I have spent way too many hours to get this beautiful game to run well in VR and quite frankly it's not really possible at the moment but i did learn quite a few things that i think will be helpful for you guys as well so i want to share my findings um but definitely this game needs more time in the oven until the performance is there where you need it to be that being said i have my notes here and i want to share some tips and tricks for you um, to maybe help you optimize your VR experience in EVO or even your 2D experience in EVO um, because GPU performance or game performance obviously applies in 2D and in 3D. Before we dive into the in-game settings in a second here, I want to show you some important stuff here in the Steam VR settings. Uh, one thing that I did, my methodology here, was to go into the developer tab here, which you can enable by hitting show down here and then enabling this one show gpu performance graph and headset that is very very important because then when you launch a game you can see how many milliseconds it takes for a frame to render and you can see uh, basically if the game is running smoothly or not or if the changes you make to the graphical settings have any sort of impact uh, one thing that i noticed um which is kind of weird. This is usually what I run, 50, 60%, something like that in most VR games. And uh, if I go a lot higher, it doesn't really increase the uh, visual fidelity, but if I go a lot lower, it, it definitely does. And uh, EVO was definitely struggling very, very hard to hit 90 frames per second. I even tried resolutions as low as 20%, and that is what was needed or 25% to actually hit 90 FPS, even at the lowest graphic settings. And uh, my rig isn't that bad. I have a 3090, I have 64 gigs of RAM, DDR5, I have a decent AMD GPU, a CPU. So I have a medium high rig, I would say but the game is really struggling. So uh, if you want to troubleshoot, if you want to kind of optimize your performance, I would highly recommend for you to check this in the Steam VR settings in the developer tab to see what is going on when you actually play the game. Um, I spent quite a few hours yesterday and today trying all kinds of different things to get this to run well. It's not really possible at the moment. And uh, to make sure that I didn't lose my sanity, I just booted up Automobista 2 and it ran flawlessly at six milliseconds per frame. So I could even uh, increase the resolution if I wanted to. Anyway, let's, let's start EVO in 2D in this case because it's kind of uh, hard to capture VR at the moment because there isn't a great screen mirror. Um, but I will show you what I found out uh, when it comes to the in-game settings. Anyway, let's go through the settings because I've identified some of them that are quite hurtful when it comes to the FPS. Um, one thing that I would um, recommend to enable is two times multi-sample anti-aliasing. It doesn't really hurt the frames all too much. Uh, maybe one or two frames per second on a base of 60 FPS. And it does improve the image quality. Um, same for this. I didn't really notice a huge frame drop with this setting, even at cinematic. Um, but I would keep it at balanced and I would keep FXAA on as well. FXAA in my case was a frame drop of two frames per second and it does reduce anti-aliasing. That's what it's for. So I would recommend these settings right here. When it comes to the textures, uh, the anisotropic filtering in my experience didn't make a huge difference. That might be because of my 3090, it might be different for your GPU, but I would set that to high or ultra. Texture pool size, I'm not 100% sure what this setting actually does. I assume when you set it to low, you tell the game that you don't have that much VRAM available. So if you have a card that only, only has let's say six gigabytes or eight gigabytes of VRAM and you run into some stuttering or some hitching or some troubles, I would recommend reducing that until those uh, problems and stutters are gone. In my case, I will set it to ultra because I do have a lot of uh, place, a lot of VRAM for textures. 
Level of detail made a difference. I have that here at five frames per second on a base of around 60 FPS, uh, the difference between low and ultra. Um, it does make a difference, obviously, uh, when you drive uh, the game. So I would recommend putting this at high. Again, this might affect the texture uh, pool size that you need in uh, your VRAM. So if you have a card that has not that much VRAM available, you might want to lower this to medium or low. Um, but it didn't make a huge performance impact in my case. So I will leave that at ultra. This, however, the experimental aesthetic level of detail, that made quite a huge impact. Um, actually over 10 frames per second, 11 frames per second. So definitely leave this off. I would even leave this off in 2D. Um, lighting, that one was really surprising. So this one, the global illumination update frequency, it didn't make a huge difference in my case, uh, switching between high, ultra and medium. I'm not quite sure why that is. Might be that the bottleneck is in another place and this doesn't really affect the max frame rate all too much. But um, this, you can play around with it a little bit. I didn't notice a huge difference in, uh, in quality either, this uh, particular setting. Same goes for ambient occlusion. Didn't really notice a huge performance impact, so I would keep that at high, let's say both of these. Uh, volumetrics, that did make a little bit of an impact. I would keep that at low, especially since I didn't really see a noticeable visual impact in terms of the quality of the image, but I did see a performance impact of around 5 FPS, again on a base of roughly 60 FPS in the headset. Um, so I would keep that at low. Um, same goes for the reflections for one because I don't really notice them all that much when I'm driving them uh, when I'm driving in the headset and reflections are always very costly so I would keep them at low in both cases. Same goes for the shadows if you are struggling with performance in VR and we are all struggling in performance in VR in this game at the moment so I would keep shadows to very low uh experimental sim shadows again had a huge impact on fps so definitely keep those off screen space shadows didn't really make a huge difference uh, in terms of performance um you can play around with it but um i i personally would would leave that at, at full resolution uh, but that might depend on your gpu and grass density and cloud uh, quality I did notice uh, an impact here, so I would leave that off, especially since in VR uh, you don't really notice the glass all too much when you're driving. Um, so that is an easy performance gain right here, but it won't make a huge difference. So either way, it, it, the game will definitely struggle to hit 90 FPS at this point. Um, motion blur, I've turned that off completely in VR. And the mirrors I kept to single and low resolution and low distance mirrors. Again, very costly when it comes to GPO performance. And that is pretty much all we have to play with at the moment. So what I tried, I tried so many things <laughs> over the last hours. And um, the only way that I got the game to run at a stable 90 frames per second was to go really, really, really low in the Steam VR uh, resolution setting. And um, that was so low that it basically was not playable. So once you go to, let's say, 30, 35, you will really notice it, especially in the distance that the image kind of gets a little bit smeary and blurry. Um, you really want 50 or maybe 60%. And again, I just booted up Automobilista 2 in VR and it ran flawlessly and had headroom still. And I still had Automobilista at ultra settings from the 2D recording I did a few days ago. So unfortunately, I would have liked to give you guys a performance guide right now that gives you a stable 90 FPS, um, but it just is not uh, possible at the moment. I think we will have to wait for further updates and further um, improvements to the render in Assetto Corsa Evo, which will definitely happen. It's still very, very early days. 
Um, but for now, um, I hope you can at least have some fun with these improved settings. I actually did a few laps and um, it is drivable, but at least with my headset, with the Reverb G2, uh, unless you hit a stable 90 FPS, you kind of notice a little bit of lag and latency when you move your head and when the car moves quickly or you move your head a little quicker you do get that kind of jittery input lag and um, it doesn't feel great so for now at least um, those were the best settings that I have identified for a better performance but unfortunately it's not enough but we will revisit uh, these settings um, when new updates will be released. Um, I will revisit VR performance with every update that, that comes our way. I have heard that the next big patch, big patch, the next uh, update will release on February 19th, which is in four days. And that will come with two new cars and a new track. I'm really looking forward to that. We will do another patch watch episode for that. And we will see if VR performance has improved as well. I will test that with every build now. And hopefully there will be that point where EVO runs at least as good as Automobilista 2 does in VR. But yeah, guys, that's it for now for this episode. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.